deep breaths. Before we get to the good, we must go through the bad. And now we must start with an award that used to be called the Konami Award, the Konami Corner Award. But this year has a whole new name uh, honoring somebody who was nominated so many times in the category, it really did have to be ne- and renamed. somehow hasn't been nominated this year. Incredible. Incredible Absolute stuff. scenes. Um, so, we now have the Randy Pitchford Award, <laughs> celebrating bad, dumb, and shady practices in video games. Congrats, Pre- Randy. <laughs> Previous winners in the category, 2015, Konami in general, 2016, Oculus Rift, Palmer is a fascist, the other guy's a pedophile. 2017, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Neo Gaff Guy is a creep. 2018, Telltale Games mismanagement leads to studio closure. 2019, the Blizzard Hong Kong debacle. And 2020, boundless levels of crunch continue at developers worldwide. And now for the murderer's row of nominees for 2021, we have... Activision Blizzard hires Bush era torture apologist and Trump administration bully. Bobby Kotick and Activision Blizzard's mistreatment and cover ups. Cyberpunk 2077. You knew it was going to be there, guys. Efootball 2022. Google Stadia fires devs instead of letting them fix their games. Path of Exile gives preferential treatment to paid streamers. PS5 supply hampered by unchecked scalping. Six days in Fallujah. Ubisoft's culture of abuse, workplace culture at Techland. It was a banner year for wankers. This gentlemen. is, I think, possibly our toughest year yet for this. Yeah. It's our grimmest year as well. Like, there's a lot of just genuine, well, uh, broken, like, lives and people's industries just fucked up here. And I also kind of look at the past uh, uh, winners and I go, well, thank God all those issues have been resolved and nothing like those <laughs> things ever happened again. Yeah, I mean, there's no yeah. more crunch now. No we crunch. fixed that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well done, lads. I, I feel like abuse has taken over from crunch. So I yeah. kind of feel like we're going severely backwards. And that's oh, all the, and the crunch hasn't gone either. The crunch hasn't gone. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. It's like Everything it's, in Hong Kong is all good now. And yeah. I, I also feel like I actually think there is, so to me personally, I feel like in this category, there is one winner that's some of how shitty this year has been there's one winner to me in my head number one with a bullet and yet all the the other ones could easily win any other year as well yeah. like yeah. like it's absolutely stuffed to the gills and i actually do have as dave mentioned in there was actually have a last minute write-in i don't think it wins but i do okay. have a write-in okay um, this, this i think this is the first official write-in in this category <laughs> and what and what a year to have it uh ubisoft courts just mm-hmm. like no, like uh, you, you could also put in there broadly everyone trying to get in on the the shady NFT grift before the bottom falls out. But there was something so perfect about it. it had to be Ubisoft. They had to <laughs> yeah. be first across the fucking post. Just get in there with shitty little ghost recon items yeah. that I just saw a tweet going around there. Someone checked the blockchain and it's like they're making no money off it. Because I, I, it's 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 pyramid scheme shit, you know. I imagine NFTs and, and blockchains like that. That's probably going to appear next year in some form. Oh fashion. yeah, it's like across the board. It's been all over. I that. mean, like really, had it happened any earlier than the cutoff line, that a uh, stalker two situation. Oh god, yeah, so good, <laughs> so good. And that's you know that in terms of like what the nominees look like this year and what they're missing is like in every other year, pretty much there are a good three or four that are pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just like Keystone cops slipping a banana peel type news stories. I suppose the closest we probably have to that is e football because it's just yeah. Konami walking into a lamppost over and over again. It's them as sideshow Bob with the rakes. But even that, like Konami has been such a shambles for so long, it's not even that funny anymore. Yeah. No, no. Um, tell you what, tell but, you what. Let's. I think we should spin that wheel it. and uh, yeah. So yeah, as as previous rolling. listeners may remember, we det- we dictate the order that we uh, strike games off uh, based on the wheel of fate. So which one of us will be going first? Let us find out. Oh God! Just to it's confirm been... to the listeners, this is not a, Dave does spin an actual. He's not doing a bis. Dave has oh. a wheel. Hold like, the, yeah. Uh, when, uh, when you've got the thing, hold it up to your. Yeah, uh, he's got a. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, he has it on another device. Yeah. Hey, so the first one is Jack. Oh wow! Okay, so. Wow, coming out of the out of the hat early here. I tell you what, uh, I mean, I feel like because of what you mentioned, Dave. Just because it's hilarious rather than depressing, I'm gonna have to strike at e football here. 
and get eFootball 22 off the list. Yeah. Now, now, like, it's a desecration of, like, a former great of the industry, right? So yeah. this is, like, FIFA and Pez have been tent poles of of the football gaming industry yeah. for many many years. Yeah, the only shows in town, like, because I don't know if you yeah. could ever really call this is football. No. Yeah. No. Like, yeah. Um. You know, any of those things, but to see something at that level, just within what the space of maybe two or three years, when they first announced it was going to be e football, then it was a free update. And now it's like a, a free to play disaster where you can like buy a bunch of in game stuff. Like, yeah. just just to throw it out there, when it first came out, some of the problems, right? Players glided across the pitch during matches in weird yeah. directions. Players ran around in strange fashion during goal celebration. Yeah. Player models were distorted and their movements unnatural as they collided with each other quite a lot. Mm. I mean, we all saw like the Messi and Ronaldo horror shows. Fouls weren't given, which were clearly fouls, which is, you know, kind of similar to, you know, anyone that watches football and the old VAR controversies, we topical. Uh, ball passed <laughs> through players' bodies during matches, which is a slight problem, I would say, considering that hitting the ball is the main yeah. idea of the game. Uh, there were no responsiveness to command inputs and the speed of the ball and player movement decreased during matches. So your players started off running around and then by the end of the game, they were slowly moving towards the ball, which yeah. is just awful. And that was what it was like when it when it released. And as with probably a couple of other things on this list, we got plenty of uh, of JPEGs from Konami on the tweet. No, no don't <laughs> uh, don't uh, don't underplay the fact that uh, like I, I know there's you know um, not every listener is going to be a big football fan, but like in the top divisions of football, your average league competition has eighteen to twenty teams. Uh, the online mode of eFootball twenty twenty two at launched with seven total seven just, or eight i think just not good enough is yeah, it really? um, the thing so like i don't want to labor this point too long because it is going off i'm happy to see it go but the thing that w- one of the things that was so disappointing about it was that you know you mentioned the season update thing so they didn't release a new one in 2021 they just did an update so people who already had pez 2020 essentially got the 2021 version with the updated uh, kits for the whatever teams were licensed and the updated rosters and stuff like that for free. Yeah. Right. G- so good that's thing. a cool move. And the reason they did it was they said they wanted a longer lead in time to develop 2022. So that in isolation, good choice. It, like, and I remember being mystified as to Konami actually making a, a sound choice that worked out for players. Um, and Pez 2021 was still good. Like it was still fun to play. And um, the other thing was, I remember us saying it at the time, is that the idea of going free to play with a game like this is like, if you do it right, it's maybe the only way for them to gain ground on FIFA. FIFA. Because if yeah, they absolutely. come out, it totally makes sense. Yeah. If they come out and hit the game, the ground running with this, and some of the things they did in the lead up to it sounded like they were thinking about it because the elevator pitch is good to try and get them back out there, you know. Yeah, and and they licensed a, a few more teams, like they they got Lazio, Atalanta, a couple of other teams, and swiped their licenses away from FIFA. So like FIFA now have instead of Atalanta, you have to play as Bergamo on FIFA. Juve are still Piemonte Calcio. Barcelona don't play in the new camp on FIFA because they were individually instead of trying to spend all the money to do collective licensing agreements with leagues Pez were going in and getting exclusive deals with individual clubs to swipe them away from FIFA so some of these decisions seemed really good and if they had hit the ground running it, it could have been a game changer for them it could have finally been the thing that turned them around I'm not saying that they would have overtaken FIFA or anything to that extent but it at least would have been the best shot they have of taking back some of that market share and um, especially of the casual football fan that didn't want to pay 80 quid for the brand new FIFA on the new consoles um but instead instead, instead it we have all all the problems that Jack described and then yeah. some you know it, I mean? it launched so. and a day later had a negative rating of 92% on Steam and was the worst rated game on that platform. Yeah. So, so yeah. let's let's say goodbye to eFootball 2022. Barry, like, you're up Even next. by the standards of Konami, and I'll just say this, even by the standards of Konami, 
it still managed to find like a new low, which yeah. is in some yeah. ways impressive. And it was admirable. like they were only making pretty much one game anymore, and now they fucked that one up too. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Like that was yeah. the joke. Was like, and they don't do anything. Oh, they put out like a football game every year, and it's fine. And like, now it's not fine anymore. Yeah. Here's um, the thing about Konami, though, is that like as shit as they are, and as as bungled and fucked up as they are, and and I'll emphasize that we know about. At least they're just famous for being clowns. They're not famous for anything more insidious than that. Yeah. It's so like that- you, you only make one game and now you put it out every year and it's fucked. What are you, Ukes? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we topical. Uh, Very yeah. topical that. <laughs> right, Barry, you're next. Uh, I suppose I just I'll, I'll take off the writing just because I thought it was good to get in a mention Ubisoft Quartz. You you could extend that to the broad you know uh, coming your way 2022 100 percent the broad NFTification of games absolutely coming. Brace yourselves. Expect do not expect anything because you're just going to get disappointed. But like I said, it's just so funny to me that it's Ubisoft. They just had to get in there first. They never saw a flash in the pan. Uh, fucking idea that they couldn't get up on. I mean, there's a reason the joke is that they, no matter what goofy thing Nintendo does, they're straight there with a game. They've straight away got one. Doesn't matter if it's a great idea, a terrible idea, they've got one. It's like they've got they've got their own nomination on this category for their terrible culture of abuse, which has gone unaddressed once again uh, uh, for the better part of this year. Uh, they've got kind of waning, flagging franchises that that, that people are, are are thoroughly drained and and, and tired of. They've got all these issues none of which are seemingly being addressed, but they just have to get out there with, you get a little receipt saying you own this AR. Look at you, big boy. Like, it's just such hack shit. I mean, my my big issue with NFTs, aside from, you know, the fraud and the environmental stuff, is it is so goddamn lame. Like, that is yeah. just the sole word I want to use. It's so lame. Why would anyone yeah. have any interest in this, let alone spending yeah. upwards of four so, figures on it? Something that all also would have made it, uh, had it not been for the cut-off point, was the one with Peter Molyneux's new game, where every oh, individual yeah. character oh, is sake. an NFT, which is the yeah. most Peter Molyneux thing <laughs> that Peter Molyneux has done in a long time. Weird how all the cowboys in gaming are getting in on this stuff. What's up yeah. with that? I, what's yeah, the, what's I the connection there? Uh, Peter you know Molyneux. what else is weird? David Cage, suspiciously quiet during all this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that Star Wars game. Oh, you, you get to own your own little Jedi. That's going to be mm. great. Oh, here's, how I, that. here's how I know that they are in the NFT coffin is when uh, John Terry, former Chelsea captain, and some would say disgraced Chelsea captain, retweeted an NFT thing. <laughs> <laughs> when he was new to Twitter, and I was like, "Yep, okay, fuck NFTs." Yeah, <laughs> <Great stuff. laughs> sorry, Big JT. Uh, Mark, uh, I am gonna go. Even though this is fucking terrible, I'm gonna uh, strike off Google Stadia because I don't think anyone actually remembers that Google Stadia is a thing at this yeah. point. But th- this was hilarious. That like they they essentially. Um, laid off developers before they got a chance to fix the games on the service that everyone's complaining about. Yeah. And so like the, the big thing about that is that because they fired everyone, like, and because the game is stored on like Google server side, there's yeah. lit- there is literally nothing that a yeah. player can do to try and, you know, fix any kind of technical issues or what it's just, there is nothing you can do. Mm. Um, and you know, like the support, whenever anyone tries to contact them, pretty pretty much said as as much as like, hey, this is on Google, it's on their side, and we can't do anything about it. Um, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, and I think we spoke about this with Google Stadia last year or the year before, that this is no more than what we expected um, from yeah, that I, platform. I think we had toyed very early on to putting Google Stadia on this, but it was one that I, I think time was going to tell on it and time did tell do you know and it just turned out to be an even more expensive oh yeah yeah uh, well <laughs> told i think yeah. the worst thing about this shit is that so the timeline here on the 27th of january phil harrison emails all of his employees and lords them for the great progress that they made on google stadia and then five days later the same phil harrison announces google will no longer be developing its own games effective immediately Mm. um and when when they asked him did you know that you were going to shut shit down five days before when you sent that email he said yeah we knew at that point so it's like if you know you're going to shut operations down do you really email everybody and say good job 
well done, congratulations, everything's going really well. When five days later, you're just going to break everyone's hearts. Anyway. Look, look we, we've got like other cases of emails being sent this year. That, you know, <laughs> Worse. Like, yeah. Yes. So this is just dickish. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think like uh, one of the, the key things as well is that he tried to claim that, you know, Microsoft buying Bethesda was one of the things that negatively impacted Google and that that was going to drive the cost of games up. It's like the cost of game development's been going up steadily every year since games were a thing. Yeah. You know, but how also much... to suggest that Google don't have the war chest to compete. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Also, how much like the, Google, the biggest company in the world that literally own the site where people research everything didn't do their research on how much game development was going to cost. You're saying you didn't ask Jeeves this? <laughs> yeah. Well, need you use Yahoo to search for this shit? Yeah. Uh, um, unbelievable. Clownish, but not the worst shit we have. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm up next. And I mean, it's already getting pretty tough. So I, I guess. By the way, are we just gonna let Barry slide with adding something so he can immediately take it away? <laughs> Not yeah. having to make a <laughs> difficult decision. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if he keeps this up. No, right. I'll, I'll uh, listen. I'm getting. I I already know hours in advance. I got some spicy stuff coming your way, lads. So don't oh, you worry know. about it. All don't right, 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 so. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going here with um, again in another year. This is a much stronger one. Um, and unless I missed other things to do with this game and this topic, I feel comfortable taking off at this point. And that's six days in Fallujah yeah. because it feels like all that happened with it is so it's coming back out again. It's basically a rehash of the same controversy when the game was originally going to be made. And in summation, that's basically too soon yeah. Uh, yeah. to do that. And I don't disagree with that. Um, or maybe but- just don't do it. You could also yeah. not do it as my yeah. yeah. Every time I read an interview with those guys, I'm like, yeah, yeah or you could just not. You you just not do do that. Like, you like one, it's still too soon. And two, like, are you banking so hard on the six days in Fallujah intellectual property? Like, this is the one. Yeah. This yeah. is the one. This is gonna do it. Like, you know, even like ah, oh, yeah, no. They they, they want some not of it. Into it. They walked some of it back, but some of the early interviews when people they brought this fucking idea back from 2005 or whenever the fuck yeah. they were originally doing it. And yeah. some of the early uh, it interviews was definitely were, way too soon the first time. It was too soon the first time. It's arguably still too soon now. And but some of the early interviews when they were being criticized for this game, they tried to do the classic we're not making a political statement thing, which is so cowardly and so comical and so done to death in the industry already. Then they walked it back and they tried to make it seem like they were doing research and work and trying to tell a human story. And it's just like, in some ways, even though this is a very specific story they're trying to do, we we see this kind of crap all the time, yeah. and it's always and terrible. It, yeah. And they are not the worst, even though it's quite it's, it's deserving beyond this list. But yeah, it's the, not the winner. One, the one thing that's been interesting in it is the nature of people's distaste has changed slightly. So everybody still doesn't want this game to come out. The first time it was because like literally like the bodies are still warm. Mm. Like for fuck's sake, that's how close it was to the, the, you know the first time they tried to do this. This time it's more like it, like you kind of said there, Barry. You can't come out with this game, make a pansy ass statement that this isn't a political game when you're releasing a game about that war mm. yeah you know the, uh... and and how the 20 years of press and uh you know academia and research around this war has played out in the public eye you can't it's it it's impossible not to make a political statement making a game about that war so um, yeah yeah but it, it, it with all that said compared to some of the other things on this it's kind of just like I mean, what did they fucking expect? Like, this is if you told me this time last year is they're going to reannounce Six Days of Fallujah, I would have been able to lay out for you exactly what happened subsequently. Yeah, I, it's it's nuts. Um, I guess two or three things from me. So, number one, the Council on American Islamic Relations called Six Days in Fallujah an Arab murder simulator, um, which is yeah, um, pretty much accurate. Eight eight hundred civilians died yeah. um, during the siege of Fallujah, which is. Like you say, Dave, like, I mean, even 10 years later, like, than the, than when they originally were trying to make it, it just seems so insanely distasteful. Like, you would have to let, you know, the people who were alive when it happened die, and then the generation after who heard all the stories die before you were even going to go close to tackling this thing in an entertainment product where you can play a part in it, not just like you're trying to show the hardships of it. And uh, for some reason, the guy, um, Peter Tamti, who... 
who was like the the president of Atomic, who went bankrupt when this was on the docket for them. So the company that he was heading had this idea and they went under and then he got in at another company and he was so desperate. He had such a hard on for this idea that he decided to bring it back. And I'm not saying six days in Fallujah bankrupted Atomic, but I can't <laughs> say that it saved them from bankruptcy in the first place. So. I, I, I just like the idea of he goes to this other co- company and they're like pitching <laughs> like mascot platformers. And he's like, brothers, I, I, I gotta do this war crime game. I gotta, yeah. I got, you gotta make my little war crime game. I've been trying to get it made for a decade. <laughs> please no we can we can do we can do springy the happy squirrel next year i gotta do my war crime game i need it it's just like um, somebody said it's like this isn't gonna be fucking magnolia or something right? yeah, don't, yeah, don't exactly, need to make this. yeah stop trying to make fetch happen for fuck's sake uh jack we're sticking with you for the next game to go off oh bloody hell now yeah it's really getting dark isn't it yeah. uh right so i think the least dark thing on here um and look this sucks it really does but and i don't necessarily want to defend the company that it kind of affects but part of it isn't necessarily their fault, even if they haven't done a great job overseeing making sure it doesn't happen and that's the ps5 supply hampered by unchecked yeah. scalping um so this sucks we all know it sucks uh, scalpers have figured out a way to like load up multiple baskets and do multiple purchases. Their technology for these the, uh, against the current econ systems, like they far outstrip, as piracy always tends to do in any form, far outstrips the current mediums and methods of distribution and sale. And they are miles ahead of any of the the, the econ retailers in this country. And yet, it seems like from the actual retailers, the sum total are fuck all has been done about this now is this sony's fault a little bit because really they should say right until you fix this we're not going to give you any more ps5s yeah that's what they should do but they they haven't done that um what they are trying to do is they're trying to do their own thing where they're sending invitations out so there are there there is kind of an idea around trying to get this better Mm. but it isn't it shouldn't totally be on them to police this situation this is really almost to the point where you'd say right this is a governmental thing or this is like a you know this is like an industry thing like if you've got ticket touting and stuff like that having like for instance i'm a football fan so if i go to the ground in the last couple of years there are signs up anti touting there are police cracking down on it there are people making sure it doesn't happen this is not dissimilar to ticket touting it's just as egregious and exploitative so therefore the police or the government should be the ones that are trying to police this, and maybe those that maybe those retailers should be doing a better job as well. But, but the problem I, is, I, this is purely like a digital space. Like mm-hmm. you know, you can't exactly be standing outside a GameStop with uh, police. No. Yeah, know? I also think, um, as I kind of said on the cast the last time we were talking about this at length, like I think sadly because it still would be a material issue and would still be trouble for a lot of people getting you know done over for like overpaying for ps5s but i don't think this is on anybody's radar as much did it not coincide with the still ongoing chip shortage reducing the level of stock that would be available anyway still a year into these consoles release yeah um like i i kind of said before piracy with these these consoles has you know at least the last couple of generations been or not piracy sorry like the the kind of the touting of them the the um the scalping uh has been a serious problem it was a serious problem with the ps4 generation for sure um yeah. but they were able to restock quicker then so people were waiting less time but now you're having uh, like i mentioned on the cast uh, you know i heard a dad go into my local GameStop in october and he was like do you have any ps5 and they're like if you haven't already pre-ordered one you're not getting one before february yeah and like a year into the console that's outrageous and yes part of that is due to scalping but a lot of it also has to do with the chip shortage i don't think yeah. we'd still be talking about the scalping now were it not for that chip shortage yeah agreed yeah I, I, i'll put it like this because i uh, i didn't have a ps5 at the time we did the game of the year recording last year um but i do have one now if i didn't have one as of 20 the end of 2021 this would have been my number one but as i do fucking <laughs> run else it can come off 
<laughs> I think also to, to, to cut Sony some additional slack again on top of the chip shortage, I would also say that this problem is exasperated by the digital space and COVID means that's basically the way everyone's trying to get one. I mean, I believe yeah. GameStop was not open this time last year in Ireland. I think no. I might be mistaken on that. Um, so the, and I the, think the, the I, typical I, thing of, you know, well, we'll send, you know, the Limerick branch is getting 20 PS5s and it's on them to fix it. Whereas now it's like, okay, everything's online and you have to just overcome scalpers somehow. I, I, mark, you know. um, the brick and mortar game shops reopened briefly right before Christmas in Ireland and then closed again in January because we got our circuit breaker. Um, so, but even still like the uncertainty with regards to COVID, like, you know, things opening and closing in different territories around the globe and just the logistical difficulty of shipping things globally during a pandemic as well. Um, you know, it's trouble. And as before we get into all the, you know, supply chain stuff and shit like that going on, you know, outside of uh, the chip shortage. Right. uh, It's just a perfect storm of shit, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to hear how bad it is. Uh, the, the company that I work for, it's not even necessarily, and I mean, part of it is because England voted themselves into an oblivion, but we had stock that got from uh, Myanmar, which is a pretty disputed hot zone at the moment. We got out stock and it got from Myanmar to England quicker than it got from the port in England to the warehouse that we own. <laughs> Fuck <Yeah. sake>. Right. <laughs> So that's the kind of shit we're dealing with. Jeez. It's it's the ports are fucked as well. Like trying to deal with all the, the stock things are getting lost. Lorries, there's a lorry driver ship that's yeah, supply chains globally messed up. So I mean, it, I hate to defend Sony as much as we're defending them, but there's a lot of shit going on. But I, I think it's fair. I think it's completely it's fair. fair. I think Jackie 100%. made an, an excellent point. I, I also completely unrelated to a lot of electronics at all. I deal with UPS a lot, and let me tell you, brothers, I'm not getting paid enough because it's <laughs> yeah. just the situation is. A complete mess. Um, I feel you, man. Solidarity so, uh, dealing with solidarity. logistics at the moment. <laughs> Big time. Uh, Barry, I believe you're next. Okay, uh, I'm going to take off a beefy boy here to make up for my removing my own suggestion. <laughs> um, this is a massive one. I just don't think it wins this year. Like we said, at the top of the category. I think we should. We'll we'll get it all out of our system now. Let's talk about cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell that you it what. Probably was next. S- yep. CD Projekt Red. Every time that one of these other fuckers came into the headlines, we're thanking their lucky yeah. stars. Like, oh we my can God. just slink off to the background and continue not to fix our broken ass game. Um, one thing I will say a year on, like all this shit with Cyberpunk had started just when we were recording this last year. Like it, Cyberpunk missed our December 1st cut offline. Mm-hmm. That's how close it was to game of the year last year. And we were utterly confident it was going to win this category. Uh, <laughs> Sadly, it doesn't. Um, so I suppose the one, I, I don't even want to say positive, but the one not outrageously negative thing about it is that people uh, playing it, the kind of backwards compact version on their PS5, that's the PS4 version, because the current gen console version still don't exist. Still yet. Yeah. not out. Yeah. And that's still fun. no ETA, I don't think. Summer, I think. They're the um, mostly working now, just still kind of not, particularly fun even when it is working a year um, later though man. a year yeah. oh no a year later but oh. I'm, I'm i'm just saying that like compared to this other shit yeah yeah it's kind of no, like it's fair. yeah it is though but it is one of the i mean it, it's already has been and i think as time goes on history will only look back on it even more so it, it's got to be one of the most spectacular crash and burn launches yeah. hype hype oh. versus reality of all oh, time oh. in the media up through the end of march when they were still uh regularly releasing their hey gamers statements mm. on their yellow backgrounds i was like this is a mortal lock to win this category this year I mean, let's yeah. just you can begin and end this with the fact that like it was removed from the playstation 4 yes so when have we ever removed... seen that with a triple a game and the, uh, whole, I, the last just... time i can think of was arkham knight from the pc yeah, yes. but like on so, but Sony, like on a console, like PC, it seems like PC ports come out broken all the time. And, mm. you know, a lot of the things happen with the limitations of the system that people are playing them on. And it's very hard to dev for PCs because you kind of don't know necessarily know what other people's hardware is going to do, blah, blah, blah. All of those things, right? Which I, uh, are fair, but still companies should do better and, and fuck them for still charging the money. But when you've got a solid, stable machine to develop your game on that hasn't changed in years, it's coming out on PS4, which was r- nearing the end of its life cycle. So you know exactly how that shit works. Yeah. And you release a broken 
buggy, fucked up mess. And let me just tell you, how much were CD Projekt Red enjoying all of the publicity around their game? Everyone was saying it looks cool as shit. They got Keanu Reeves to turn himself into a fucking meme at E3. And like, you know, no, you're amazing. That whole shit, everyone was like, oh my God. And The Witcher was such a great game. And like, I don't think there'd ever been more positive sentiment in gaming like just when other companies were fucking up because we had like the UB abuse that scandal kicking off last year and mm. people were already slamming bobby kayak and all of this stuff that we're, we're going to talk about a little in a, in a minute all of that shit was going on and it was like look at cd project red look at how right they're getting it man i can't wait yeah for they, they were 27 to come out because they a, a, a solid, gigantic, massive brown turd was yeah. dropped upon the world yeah. of gaming as it was released. Because as we, we've said, like Witcher came out and like Witcher had its problems at start, but like their customer service and post game support for that game was incredible. And it turned out to be yeah. one of, if not the game of the generation for a lot of people. Um, so they had all that credit banked and they blew through that and then so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, within the, a couple of months of this game coming out. The, the 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 PS4 D or the PlayStation delisting thing is especially perfect for this award that we do every year because it was a one two punch of two things. It was one, it was, the game fucking stank. That was one, but also it was blatant hubris on their part to say if you are not happy with this, contact your yeah. platform holder for a refund. And Sony said, contact who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they they hadn't hadn't fuck you, motherfucker. Yeah. They hadn't to told store. anyone. They hadn't told anyone to, that they were like, going to do that. Yeah. Absolutely so that, fucking outrageous. So yeah, the that, fringe that... benefit, Barry, though, is that all of these platform holders really reviewed their uh, re- like, like their mm. uh, returns policy and had to develop it a lot more than it was before. Yeah. So if anything, they can thank Cyberpunk Which, for being. Yeah. Like, a c- I, I think wasn't it Arkham Knight was part of why Steam had to review theirs when that happened. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that was part of why they but, came up but, with there. You can try it for X amount of hours before you return it. But that that is CD Projekt Red like putting themselves on a pedestal that like while some of that is and then swan enough, diving off it. Oh god, no god. dive. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say not even a swan dive, like just a yeah. belly flop. You know, yeah, right. like it was. Uh, it, I was playing the back compact version on the PS5, which every video, you know, Digital Foundry, and everyone else said this is of the bad versions. This is the one to play to this day. A year later, nothing has hard crashed my PS5 as much as Cyberpunk. Uh, I got multiple crashes back to the home screen. Uh, every bad, you know, the only good thing it had was the frame rate. The, the, it ran at 60 frames a second consistently. That was about it. Every yeah, other so thing was, it was out it like was, half the assets. It, it, was, it was buttery smooth watching your character T posing through the, yeah. Yeah. Through the yeah. roof of a car. Buttery smooth as my, my cock was clipping through my trousers as I'm <laughs> trying to set the character up. And as, uh, as Dave said at the top of this, this discussion, when they fixed this fucking thing and they finally put out the actual PS5 app, the native PS5 version, I still have no interest in it. I also thought the game was not good at all. I thought it was if yeah. this game worked, it was like it was it was like a game. It was like a, a two generation old B game that was way too ambitious. It's like oh, it's a role playing stealth first person shooting hacking dialogue role playing. It's like it's not a good shooter. Yeah. It's not a good stealth game. It's it's, it's surprisingly underdeveloped as a role playing game. I thought yeah. if it had um, come out you know, during the P- if it had come out late PS3 mm. um, and worked, it would be a co- contender for the ham sandwich game. Yes, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. a teeny little bit of a cult following, maybe, yeah. you know, like, I, but it was just so not what I needed it to be. I, I feel like that this is going to be this ongoing issue. And we've had this issue for, you know, the last 10, 15 years or so where um, studios have like these kind of really grand ideas about the type of game that they want to make. And like, we've even seen it with Halo Infinite, which I'm enjoying, but it's obviously not the game that they wanted to make. You know, like you start off with this pitch, this idea on paper. And then at some point along the way, you realize like, oh, right, well, this isn't obvious. There's no way we can make the thing that we want to make. It's like I've done 48 hour game jams and run into this issue. But, you know, I'm there's no other than like the 10 quid I paid for my takeaway or whatever. Like that's about as far as it gets. It's a whole other matter when you've got a game that you've been developing for like seven years or so. And then suddenly at the tail end of it, you realize, well, this isn't the fucking thing that we wanted to make, you know, so. I feel like there's there's two things that are going to happen here. One of them is that engines are getting you know, like we were talking to Peter Williamson last week about Unreal Engine Five, and like it's a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier to make great looking games, but there's obviously still 
the whole kind of mechanic side of it that still has to be developed and you know the idea of a big open world you can do anything that you want like all right sure there are there are versions of that like breath of the wild is a big open world game but also kind of mechanically it's not actually that advanced you're linked right. you're running around yeah. you know you pick up shit you cook some food but like right. it's it's not this kind of deep heavy rpg type of game so anytime a, a developer is like yeah we're gonna have this massively intricate system this big open world like alarm bells are just going to be ringing you know from now on so there's that but i just i hope and i like to think that the big studios are seeing this kind of stuff and just trying to be a little bit smarter about the management around like okay what actually can we do in the three four years or so that it's going to take to develop this game oh, that mate. isn't going to <laughs> bankrupt the fucking company and isn't gonna you know come out released as broken as it is hopefully that it'll yeah. get smarter in time but you know that's uh yeah, yeah that's fanciful <laughs> mark you're next oh uh, right yeah now oh, jesus christ well <laughs> All right, I'll say the Path of Exile peripheral treatment to paid streamers because, like, it's that honestly is just an extension of uh, a type of way that developers and publishers have been working with influencers and publishers in the last basically since influencers became a thing, anyway. You know, um, like, it's obvious that publishers are more than happy to go to influencers and content creators because, you know, they're, it's a lot easier to, to woo them and get them, you know, hyping up their products than it is to go to your kind of name, insert gaming public publication of choice that might not enjoy this product and whatever else. And, you know, this is just an extension of that. And like, unfortunately, Companies that have, you know, um, players on accounts that, you know, spend a lot of money with them that have, whether it be VIP accounts, whatever you want to call it, like they're probably going to give them that preferential treatment anyway, because they're the ones spending money on that game. So, hey, let's keep them happy. Let's keep them spending. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Like, hey, if they are your most invested players, probably do want to give them that little extra bit of support. Mm -hmm. So this does suck, but... It's it's not as egregious as well basically everything else we have on this list. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think the, the so the, the the egregious things about this was when people were kind of streaming it or whatever. Like the the general public view of this Path of Exile Ultimatum uh, DLC thing was that everyone was having to wait in a queue. And like the people you're watching streaming on Twitch are just going and logging on, going straight into the oh, game. Wow, really? And it's very, yeah. So it's very much like the, you know, Homer Simpson barbecue pit. Oh, that's a fine looking path of XO or a mate. And why doesn't mine look like that? And then it's, it's the screenshot of you waiting in a queue. And the thing, the thing that was particularly nefarious about it is that like at the high end of the game, players like compete for places on the leaderboard. And that leaderboard gets you more loot in the game. Right. So like the quicker a player gets into the game, they can move up the leaderboard that much quicker and then they can establish themselves there to start getting all of this loot. So all of these streamers who got let through and are obviously playing the game quite a lot for, for an audience are the ones that had the unfair advantage over the people that are rather than being paid to show the game, they're paying to play the game and they're not getting the same advantages that someone streaming. Yeah, but like what which sucks. Mean- it's would nowhere that, near as bad as the other stuff. On yeah, here. would that be any better or worse than like you know the sort of day zero pre-orders? Hey, if you pre-order, you'll get to play twenty four hours, forty eight hours before anyone else. Like, I just it, it is worse than that because then you pay to have that privilege. I whereas, guess, but for me, that's, that's two sides privilege. of the same coin. That, yeah, but they're trying to make their shit like, oh, our shit's fine. Come and look at it. Come and play our game. When in reality, it's not like that. It's kind of given an unfair view of, of what it's like, what the experience yeah. is like, because you, you've you got everyone else waiting in the queue, whereas this person's logging straight on and playing the game. It's kind of like an um, it's a false advertising. It is the Homer Simpson barbecue pit. Um, <laughs> and that's that's really kind of where metaphor, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's it, a good I mean, one. It's I like it. It's a good one. It's a good yeah. one. I think, I think the day zero stuff also, I think in the grand scheme of things, as someone who I was just looking through my PS app and I realized I played 90 hours of Call of Duty Advanced uh, uh, fucking Modern Warfare 2019, realistically being first past the post and getting to play it first in the grand scheme of things doesn't alter yeah. your experience, really. It's just no advantage. A, it's a classic just give us a couple of quid to play it first, but tactically... There's basically nothing. There's basically yeah. nothing there. It's literally just a, a 
uh, you know, I, 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 I don't like that stuff to be clear, but I, I think tactically there's no, there's no bearing on it really at all. Yeah. Uh, Whereas right. there was for this, like yeah, you did enough. get the tactical yeah. advantage. Right. Uh, I'm next. Um, hey, I gotta say, uh, there's no like it, they're all losers here and <laughs> therefore winners yeah. in this category. Um, and it's tough for me to make a call as to what is the fourth of four here. Um, I suppose I got to go to the only one that doesn't directly involve uh, abuse or harassment as part of it and go with the other Activision story. And that's them hiring a Bush era torture apologist and Trump administration bully. So like just we'll get into that Activision is a collection 2021, of words. but I'll tell you what, like the most perfect analogy for Activision's year in 2021 is that two of their most high profile hires are a woman who had um, previously defended enhanced interrogation techniques, AKA torture during the, the Bush administration. And then somebody who was a former Trump staffer who after being poofed out of there um, was gobbled up by Activision <laughs> Blizzard. And then reports came out. Uh, the, what I loved about this, the Trump administration official, is that they hired somebody else and made that the pro, like the, the headline announcement of the new execs that were being hired and just snuck this guy in the back door who had been referred to even by people within the Trump administration as a bully and a, just a not good person whatsoever. Wow. If you're too much of an asshole for the Trump administration, yeah. boy, you got a problem. So again, another one that would have been uh, just an incredible like running right up towards the, the last one or two in another year but yeah but unfortunately activision the arts have been so terrible this year yeah, that they it's not themselves. even it's not even the number one story about the same company yeah yeah, so, yeah and it's top four here which is insane yeah yeah, yeah. uh so that's gotta go yeah, I, I just want to say as well that um, I did like a little bit of reading into it and, and she said the torture was an effective method yeah. to get information where this is fact-checked by fact.org and, and they, they say that often the best and most reliable information in these situations come from people who are relaxed and perceive a little threat to their yep. personal health. Yeah, Just saying, they, you're an it's, idiot. It's an, it's an accurate way of getting them to tell you things, now, yep. whether those things are true or not. <laughs> Yeah, like, also, I'm pretty sure they would tell you they were Napoleon if they thought it would make you stop. You know? Also, she was in the company six months and she was knocked down from being the leader of the women's work for sending an email in the company after all the abuse allegations came out that said that all of these allegations present a distorted and untrue picture of our company and then was immediately made to step down from the women's network by all of the women in there who were fucking furious at Francis F. Townsend I wanted to say her name so everyone realizes who the bad person is. Right. <laughs> well, one of the bad people. Uh, <laughs> one of many. We're sticking with you, Jack. You're the last one to cleave oh, something off this list before we, we go to our 1v1. So I've got poor workplace culture at Techland, Ubisoft's culture of abuse, and Bobby Kotick and Activision, also culture of abuse. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I mean... These are all awful. Um, yeah. I, I, I just want to say that any of these three things, I would be more than happy for them to win. Um, I guess of the three, probably the company that gets away with it the most due to the stature and size of the company is probably Techland because yeah. they're smaller, because they're less profit making, because they're less high profile, but that doesn't yeah. make it any different. But yeah, um, the other thing I would say uh, about the Techland one is that, like, from the stories that were coming out around the time, anyway, now, I don't know about subsequent ones that came out, but the initial mm. stories were not on the same no. scale. It's not to denigrate the stories that are coming out here, but, like, um, people literally died in, in the one Activision of the in, in the Activision right. situation you know somebody yeah. died by suicide at least one person the tech yeah. land stuff was a lot of kind of the fucking CEO comes in and he demands our fucking main character is purple on Monday and then on Wednesday yeah. he yeah, comes yeah. in he wants it to be invisible it, yeah you know it, it, it's, it seemed it's... very much like a, a lunatic uh crunching people to the point where I think was it they had like 20 senior members of staff leave within a month or something like yeah, that? Within a two-month period, yeah. yeah. Uh, it just sounds toxic. 
and awful. Yeah. And I think everybody, not maybe not to this extent, but lots of people that have worked in jobs know how horrible a toxic work environment is. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the only fringe benefit is that if, if everyone's kind of in it together, like you all have this sense of like, oh, this this fucking guy or whatever, or how are we going to get through this? But if people are not even like trying to tough it out for the industry and get through it, like you think you get into the video game industry, it's this big boon. It's something that a lot of people dream of. But like, I really feel like this and maybe last year are the years where people realize, oh no, like that is bullshit. That is the dream that they sell you on when you get into this industry is that you're so lucky to be here in this creative field. Kind of a bit almost kicked off by like the Weinstein of it all, you know, like, oh, you're lucky to be in this position. So do what I want kind of shit. Horrible, Mm -hmm. horrible things. And uh, yeah, there's no abuse like of, of bodies that we know about and again that we know about in this story so i guess i guess by that (laughs) unfortunate measure (laughs) i'm gonna have to take tech land off it it, it has to be it has to be said though like this is a very kind of uh, a small scale version of like one of the big things that you'll see a lot of people say like who have no understanding of any of this or if there's a problem just report it to the hr manager and it's like well the hr manager of this company is the fucking c is the wife of the ceo right so it's like oh god i did not know that yeah human resources really only like fully 100 percent works as it's meant to if it is wholly independent from the companies associated to because even i didn't really think about it this year until everything with Activision, Ubisoft, and all these companies kind of come to light. It's like, oh yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I do. Pr- I would imagine that HR really is there in the best interest of the company. I'm not going to say that is the case all of the time, but I certainly think for a lot of these bigger companies, and you know, considering yeah. how much how much shit has come to light over the last year or so, that that does seem to be the case. That you know, HR really does seem to exist purely to like protect the company and not the interests of the actual individuals. It's Mm -hmm. uh, something James Stephanie Sterling said in a video. It's like human resources is a perfect name because that's how they view their employees resources. And that's Um, kind of also, again, just to tip off what might be winning folks, it's all tied up in the Activision situation where it's like (laughs) the, the fucking heads of the company are the biggest shitheads of all. So the idea that you can fly the issue up the fucking flagpole is so, so, I, ill-conceived. I, I kind of feel like we all know where this is going, so yeah. let's just bury so, Ubisoft yeah. before so, we bury Activision. Yeah. Can I, so can I, I before, wait, 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 I just want to say before that, I want to put it out here that I honestly, genuinely, hand on my heart, I think that both Activision and Ubisoft should win slash lose when it comes I, to this. I, I, I guess, think they should be both. I guess the only thing that maybe not discounts Ubisoft, but puts uh, Activision ahead um is not not necessarily just the scale because it was systemic within ubisoft as well but the fact that this was already starting in 2020 to come out like it's funny it's funny you know uh earlier on with the ubisoft court thing barry said ubisoft have always got to be first across the line and boy were (laughs) they also first across the line and being out as as a massive like cover-up operation for widespread abuse and it felt like it was pretty much the same revelations as Activision would have with about six to eight months earlier. Because again, the, the big thing that happened this year, because all the stories of abuse were coming out in 2020, but the big thing that happened early in 2021 was everybody finding out just how much um, Eve Guimau and all the other senior people at Ubisoft already knew about it and were trying to hide people, move people around and refuse to step down or refuse to fire people that were their friends. Um, One, But what I think is, is as egregious, if not more, is that, yeah, you're absolutely right that, you know, a lot of this did happen in 2020, but we're here in December, 2021 and like, not much has changed. Yeah. No. And there's they, been articles or, coming out saying yeah. that exact thing. That yeah. yeah. And, 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 they're posturing and they're not yeah. doing anything. You know? and, and the same with Activision. And the thing, maybe one of the other things that puts Activision over the line for me by itself. I mean, you could just say Bobby Kotick, that, and I guess is, I can't is, argue with that. Yeah. Is that, well, yeah. And it is related to Bobby Kotick, obviously. So with <laughs> obviously. Ubisoft, it was Yves Guillemot, um and his family and all the, like the, the senior people at Ubisoft were like this cabal of people that were kind of, um, sweeping things under the rug that were keeping it hush hush and um, that were trying to keep their mates employed even though their mates were some of the abusers the same stuff was happening in um, 
in Activision. But not only was Bobby Kotick lying to the public, he was lying to the board about it. He was hiding it from the board of his own company. So like it's like it was just another level uh, again, like they really uh, leading the industry in in covering up abuse. Um, I'm kind of torn because I. I kind of do agree with Mark. I feel like I feel like there's I in the spirit of 2020 being the boundless crunch of the entire industry. I'm kind of torn between I I think I agree with Mark. And then I'm also kind of like Activision brought the fucking federal government to their own doorstep. Yeah. But they, that they, is they, pretty they, impressive to get sued level. by a state. I will grant you that. Yeah, and it's like the one thing that the video game industry always tries to do is avoid yeah. federal intervention and, at I, all. The, and, and we've got the, the Securities thing where, and like, Exchange Commission. Yeah. Securities and Exchange Commission in investigating a video game company for and fuck's we, sake. We also have the, the thing that people are, are pointing out now because like it's it it the culture is so bad and they're being so resistant to change and they're refusing like Bobby Kotick is obviously not going to step down anytime yeah. soon and um, all that is happening but as well you've got like um, people validly asking the question why are people still fucking covering Activision games mm. you know yeah. Yeah. Um, like it, it's a real failure to still be just trundling on reviewing their games like yeah, not everybody it- there are some outlets that have stopped um, I don't know how I feel about the way the games awards are like, because I, I do think that the individual developers who in some cases are victims, like shouldn't have their work completely ignored if they were nominated for something or something like that. But at the same time, I have weird feelings about these games even being mentioned at an award. You know what I mean? It's, uh, a, it, weird, yeah. it's a really like, weird situation. It's, it's like, I mean, you got the whole thing that people were saying is that, well, you know, we should just boycott and not play Activision games. And it's like, well, the counter argument to that is that, well, you know, you still have these developers yeah. and, well, yeah. not just about like everyone on the ground level that are making these games they still need to get paid. Now you could argue yeah. that they're being underpaid one way they're, or the other anyway. They're so. the ones that are going to feel the pinch. like the, And they already are. They already yeah. do. Like it's, it's, the de- it's the developers are going to be fired before any of these suits uh, feel the pinch in, in, in their pockets. Didn't they, didn't they sack a bunch of QA testers like yeah. less than a few weeks ago? Yeah. After like after they launched the new Call of Duty game, they just mm-hmm. they just upped and got rid of a bunch QA. of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. QA testers. Yeah. Like, yeah. Apparently, they had reassured them that that wasn't going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we also had um, like as well as um, instances of uh, sexual assault, sexual harassment, actual like uh, other kinds of physical harassment and intimidation. The somebody, Cosby Suite. Some the Cosby Suite. Somebody who's uh, experience with uh, abuse at Activision led them to die by suicide. Uh, We also had, um, as part of all this, a detail I had forgotten about all this um, until I was researching it for these podcasts was uh, a tape that surfaced from Bobby Kotick's old assistant where he left a voice message threatening to have her killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, There's that. I I guess... uh, What a banner year for Bobby Kotick this has been. I guess no one from, from Ubisoft did that. Uh, that we're aware of there was some good news yeah well it's um, it's because we don't understand french and they did i guess there is that specifically french (laughs) canadian as well there was uh there was reports today from um uh uh, names to fail me but whatever but like they were talking about that um a whole bunch of people like there's been a mass exodus at ubisoft in like the last six to 12 months people going to like you know work for other companies they're making like triple the figures they're making at ubisoft so um you know like there's (laughs) It's it's not positive on behalf of Ubisoft, but there is at least like positive stories about people being able to get out and go elsewhere and you know make the money they should be yeah. making. Yeah. You, oh, you know what? Um, Fine, there, Bobby there was... takes this, and you know obviously you probably should anyway. So. Don't forget as well that one of the one of the victims of uh, uh, one of the the alleged victims of rape at Sledgehammer Games in particular reported uh, their rape to. Um, the higher ups at Activision and they told her uh, not only one were they not going to do anything about it and it was the rape was allegedly perpetrated by one of the leads at Sledgehammer um, not only were they told um, they weren't going to do anything about it but they were encouraged to think positively about the experience oh yeah 
it, fine. Just, yep, Activision takes this home. It's sure. just so I, awful. I, I, I'm not even going to attempt. Like, I cannot no. bring myself to even try it and kind of yeah. uh, uh, say anything otherwise. Not only so, the, sure. uh, yeah, then there's that, and there is the refusal to promote minorities, the refusal to promote women in case they got pregnant, uh, different things like that. So, like, it is just, like, you know, uh, we could go on for another three or four hours. Just yeah. beggars, believe. How has this guy still got a job? There's uh, there's a Kotaku hell. article that basically, I, me and Jack were talking about a while ago, mm. that just, like, has everything that's happened with Kotaku, like, since, yeah. I think since the, the state of California sued them, it might go back earlier than that. Yeah. Um, and it just, it goes on and on and on and, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think how about just for for the 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 term that we put on the dock that we'll look at this time next year for what won on 2021. Um, um, you could say the the quote unquote winner of this category is industry wide abusive workplace culture led by Activision as the okay. as the flagship. Yeah. The industry because you know, they're not only the 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 most horrible shit has gone down there they are also the biggest company also on top of that like it's yep, you know yep. the exact opposite the way it should be in in our idyllic kind of world yeah right. um you know that way to acknowledge that you know as it ain't just that, them that, unfortunately that, that like, seems, our, our, that our seems like three. that seems like the right way to go i'm, I'm yep. all over that yeah yep. okay so perfect it's locked in gentlemen for 2021, the Randy Pitchford Award goes to industry-wide abuse and cover-ups led by Activision. Uh, double middle finger to all of those <laughs> bitches. So before we move on to the next category, of course, we have to find out what was voted the winner in this category in the People's Poll. I swear, people, you better be burying Activision six feet deep. Huh? Pillars of Eternity fans. The, there's going to be like there's going to be eighty percent of the people that didn't get a PlayStation Five this year. <laughs> that's also that. Listen, that's a fact. That is a factor. Yeah. That is yeah. a factor. So now I will say, uh, just for people playing at home who haven't listened to one of these before, none of the four of us have seen the results of these polls. No. Um, even I, you, Dave. If you not nope, even, I didn't look. I. I checked the first couple of entries coming through to make sure everything was working fine uh, and, now, okay. and then i have not looked at them since okay, um, okay i like this to be a mystery and i am pleased to report well not pleased considering the category but you know what i mean with a massive 58.6 percent of the vote yep bobby kodak and activision blizzard yeah, take yeah. it yeah can get right we'll see yeah, yes, this poll surprises us every year. I'm sure this year we're going to get caught left field by some stuff, but yeah, you, ha you have to know that one. You yeah, have to um, know that one. Can I just say as well, uh, the closest was 17.2% after that. <laughs> and that was also Activision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Just the whole company just burned oh, to the ground. So and the listeners again. know what's up. Yeah. And then third place with 10.3, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. There we go. Yep. So. There you I go. Mean, we, yep. we we were I, on I, to we we were on to a winner there. Yeah, I, I feel like the the title that it, it, this has now been classified as it makes even more sense. Just um, looking yeah. at the pie charts, but looking who won, that is uh, the second largest winning margin of the entire game okay. of the year process wow. for the for for the listeners of the program. Wow. 